Midweek Politics with Dave Packman on MidweekPolitics.com. Welcome back to Midweek Politics. I'm David Packman. You know, a few days ago, I watched with great interest as uh, Oregon House of Representatives candidate Art Robinson was interviewed by Rachel Maddow, got very upset with her, didn't like the questioning, insulted Rachel, didn't answer some questions and, and said he was being uh, smeared. So we got to talk to him just a few minutes before the show. His schedule didn't allow for him to be on uh, while we were doing the show live. I'm going to play for you some of the interview. The entire thing will be up on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash midweek politics. Let's take a listen. There are entities around the country that uh, come in on behalf of candidates, and the candidates are not known to have anything about them, and they don't uh, come through our campaigns. One organization, which I didn't know and don't know and have never had contact with, came in and spent about $150,000 on television on behalf of us. This is happening on both sides of the political spectrum all over the country. Sure. Of course, the, the complaint is rather specious. You know, we still have $100 million of Barack Obama's campaign funding, which is anonymous. So it's not unusual in the political spectrum to have people advertising on behalf of candidates when the candidates don't know who they are and they're not part of the campaign. Fair My enough. campaign now, is funded, as I said, and I've never received money from any uh, knownly anonymous source, although occasionally somebody will come up in a campaign rally and hand me 10 or $20 and I don't get their name. Sure. Now, specifically, with it, regardless of how much other uh, similar anonymous uh, funding of commercials is going on, are you at all concerned about the commercials that were anonymous, you know, that, that were purchased in your favor anonymously? Is that a concern to you, regardless of, of what other candidates are doing? No, and I'll give you my reason. Yeah. Uh, the suggestion is that uh, all of this campaign financing is transparent to the people, and somehow there are some others that are hiding stuff in the corner. Now, if the media were really interested and would really advertise to the electorate. I'd be speaking about Oregon now. I'm not, I, I don't know. I actually don't know where your station is. But anyway, if the media had uh, advertised our campaign funding, and, and for example, they knew how much of mine was individual and how much came from out of the district and in the district, and they knew that Pete DeFazio started out with half a million from unions and businesses who don't even do business in this district that he favors in Washington and so on. If they had a thorough knowledge of where his, you know, more than million dollars came from that he's using in the campaign, and they had a thorough knowledge from the media of where mine came from, then we might uh, argue that there was uh, uh, a concern if some of it was not identified. Hmm. But we have is a situation where... Uh, very large amounts of money are being spent. Uh, the incumbents really don't want to talk about where their money comes from. And the media, in this case, is jumping on some people who spent a relatively small amount of money for the total campaign I try to make a national issue out of it. So it would not be an unfair characteriz characterization if I said you are not concerned about that, about that funding? For the reason I just stated. I understand. That, that if that's characterized as I don't think, I think all campaigns should be anonymously funded. And no, I don't certainly care where the money comes from. Rachel Maddow, of course, suggested that the money came from criminals, and I told her that was an attempt to smear them and me with by association because there's no evidence it came from criminals. And in fact, the organization doing it, I think, has ordinary reporting requirements. Yeah. But uh, they. You, you know, I have uh, to say, I didn't. I, I, I watched that interview a couple of times. I don't think she said that the she thinks the money came from criminals. I think the question was, how would you know if it did, given that it's anonymous? But let's not let's not be late. <laughs> how do you how do, how do you know your money didn't come from criminals? No, I'm not saying it came from criminals. I'm just on national te television saying, how do you know it didn't come from criminals? Uh, sure, right. We can we can quibble about the words, but you know what it said. Okay, I want to ask the question about AIDS. Yeah. Now, I'm not going yeah. to cite anything old that you've written, because I know when yeah. Rachel Maddow did that, you, did get, you, you didn't seem to like that. But what I want to just know is, I'll ask it without any context about sure. anything written 5, 10, or 15 years ago. What is but, your uh, opinion about AIDS? Is it something that you think has well, been what? exaggerated by the government? Oh, no, not at all. What was, I, I think we should talk for a moment about what you put on the screen. Actually, I couldn't see the screen and during the interview. It was yeah. arranged so that I couldn't see it. What well, I think I don't know that screen. it was arranged. I think it's typical that the guest well, often okay. just has an audio connection. Good, good, fine. All right. Nothing was arranged. Anyway, 
the point is, what she put on the screen was a quote, yeah. and I, I stand by that quote today. It was from an article I wrote 15 years ago. Uh, during that time, you may remember, there was a controversy because the rate of increase in AIDS cases was so fast that many people were alarmed that this was a new black plague, that, that half the people in the country would be dead in a few years. And it was increasing at a tremendous rate. So if you extrapolated this rate with normal epidemiology, you would assume that this, this, could have, this could depopulate the country. These kinds of statements were all over the press. One of the reasons they were there was a mistake was being made, because age, you see, is not a disease in itself. It is a, a condition. It's a disease, of course, but what it does is give you an immune deficiency so that you are susceptible to other diseases. So if you're dying of tuberculosis, you may be dying because you were immune deficient because of AIDS and got tuberculosis, or sure. you may be dying as a normal victim. I follow. So this, this was very confusing in the early days. Fifteen years ago, people were still not sure that HIV had involvement in AIDS. And the cases were going up at an incredible rate, a very dangerous rate, which alarmed people, and, and they made these statements about uh, half the people dying. But the reason they were going up so fast was an error. They kept adding diseases. <laughs> in other words, what did, where did you make the cutoff? Any infectious disease could be said to come from AIDS or could be said to be there normally. Right. And mistakes were being made where people were adding diseases, and these were, these were sort of artificially affecting the rate of increase. And that's what I was writing about in that paragraph. The disease is, of course, a serious thing. It's a tragic thing. I'm sorry that so many people die of it and have, uh, have certainly never made any statements to the effect that the government was conspiring to either cause the disease or over, overrate it. But in that case, 15 years ago, scientists were arguing about all kinds of aspects of it, and one of the problems was this tremendous rate of increase which seemed to be partly because bureaucrats were just adding to the numbers in a, an unthoughtful way. That's what those sentences are about. And she characterized them as, me, as my saying the government, that AIDS was a government conspiracy. That's what she said. That's not what the statements mean. And nor, moreover, if she had looked at them in context, which presumably the people who prepared her program did, they would know their characterization was absolutely false. All right. Well, you know, uh, I wish we had more time. I'm glad we at least got to cover a couple of different specific issues with you. Uh, you know, my thought looking back is you didn't help yourself in that interview with Rachel Maddow. And I understand, I, I see your point about why you found it frustrating, but my sense is it, it probably is, did not help you garner more votes. Would you agree with All that? Right. Actually, it raised a lot of money for us. Uh, we got two kinds of response. Uh, we got about 500 emails, which were just straight profanity. Hmm. And we got five or 600 from people who uh, are on our side of the political spectrum, and they sent hundreds of donations. It certainly increased, increased the finances of our campaign, and I don't think I said anything on there, that program, that would be offensive to the voters that support me. It might be offensive to the people that Maddow represents, but they weren't going to vote for me anyway. All right, we've been speaking with Art Robinson, Republican candidate for uh, U.S. House of Representatives from Oregon. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank, thank you for having me on your show. We'll take a break, and before we do, coming up today on The Bonus Show, I will talk about a recent run-in I had with uh, former Congressman Mark Foley. We'll talk about how people are amazed about how much Lewis talks on The Bonus Show. Mississippi judge has jailed a lawyer who refused to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll also talk about a Fox News reporter who did some ambushes for them and is now avoiding reporters after a sexual assault charge. I wonder if Fox News will ambush him. And also a medical milestone. Genetics company, a genetics company has now started its first embryonic stem cell treatment on a patient and plenty more. We'll be back after this. Midweek Politics with Dave Packman on MidweekPolitics.com. Midweek Politics is made possible in part by the Daily Hampshire Gazette and GazetteNet.com, connecting our communities with local news and information. By DIF Design, specializing in custom business websites at difdesign.com. To find out more about underwriting midweek politics, visit midweekpolitics.com.